Two. Uh, here you can see the main pump house itself. Uh, you can see the brick construction uh, and the different uses of the yellow and red brickwork, which it actually does look quite nice. And this is where we just need to do some remedial work, touch it up, some pointing uh, it needs to be redone. And this is the main machinery group. As you can see, straight away, the machinery takes up a large space. This is why we need to have a bit of a think about it. Uh, do we keep it and make it a, uh, maybe a history tour? You know, what, what the building used to be used for and, and use that room like that? Or do we remove it and replace with uh, smaller scale models so that it, we can still use the space for other stuff, but the history of it kind of still remains? Um, the other point that we need to uh, look into is, is it listed? You know, is the machinery part of the building? Does it come under the listing of the building? Um, otherwise, we can't touch it. So that's definitely an area to look into. Uh, some more machinery. Now, even if we did rip out all the machinery, I would still keep this winch in because I think it's quite cool. It's an engineering marvel. So if you get up to London again, that would be quite cool in a, in a sense of attraction to come and see some of the old buildings and how, how it used to run and work. You can see here, this is the first, well, so the second large room. This is the large one of the two. Um, you can see that it's got a nice skylight. It is quite light in there. Um, recently, the, the roof has been replaced by a cedar. So that's quite all, all, all new and natural. Um, you can also see in the background, some of the windows have all been bricked up from where they've gone bottom and bad. So uh, some of the brickwork has had to be replaced due to that. You can also see on the outside, if you approach the roof from the outside, uh, some of the timbers above your head um, have been all replaced. They, they look quite new. Um, so that's obviously already been done. And again, this just shows some more booked up windows. The client requirements. What does the client actually want? They've stated that the building is to have hands on rolling exhibits. So they want it to be an interactive uh, area. So they want it to be turned into a science centre that everyone can get in and get hands on with it. Um, so they want hands on rolling exhibits. Nothing is to be fixed. They want to be able to change, chop and change. It's to have function rooms. Uh, it's to have, be capable of having public seminars and a reach out lab and teaching facilities. So there's quite a lot of space that they want to take up with uh, labs. Uh, teaching facilities, conference rooms, seminar rooms, um, and function rooms. So it pretty much limits that the downstairs open space will just be for the science centre, and possibly if we were to make our way upstairs, then it would be uh, all the functions and teaching facilities. They also require storage space for exhibits when they're not being used. However, we'll come on to that again. So here we have just some ideas of what some of the exhibits could be. And these are done by um, a company, Classic Exhibits, and they are just chop and changeable. All of the diagrams are just on the posters, that can all come off. And on the screens, just plug in a USB stick with whatever data you want to be shown, and press play. It's as simple as that. So some of these could be quite handy. They're all collapsible, all go away storage-wise if you don't want them to be used but it's just an idea of what some of the stands and exhibits could actually be. Sliding partition walls. To separate the downstairs area if you, if you need it to be separated off, sliding partition walls are beneficial. You can obviously have your wall, then it, when it requires not to be there for the open space anymore, unlock them, slide them out to one side, simple. And again, another picture just showing you kind of a conference space separated by a partition wall. 